Hi and welcome to my playhouse. And today I want to make an overview of this QNAP 639 Pro. It's an older QNAP and I just emptied it because I'm taking it out of production here at my playhouse and I'm gonna be selling it. But I just realized that I've really never done a video on it. So um, I think we should just have a look at it and just because I have it. So let's go see it. It's on the table. Here it is. It's as said is the QNAP 639 Pro. And on the front here, we have it. It's, it actually has a nice display in here that shows different stuff. It has a power button right there, and it has a copy button down here. You can put in a USB hard drive or USB stick here, and you can press this button, and it will automatically copy everything from the USB stick and into a uh, predefined folder on the NAS box. Now some LEDs, status, LAN, USB and eSATA. It uh, has room for six drives here and it can do larger drives. I'm selling it with these Seagate Bakuda 7200 RPMs, 750 gigabytes. Uh, the first two drives are in good state. The uh, last four drives are is kind of not so good, but I'm going to be honest when I put this up for sale and says that it's in working order, but the last four drives are really bad. It has a menu button here for controlling the display, which is in here. We could just try and power that up. Well, now it's running. It's, it's a bit noisy right now. I do believe that the fans are running at a higher speed while booting, uh, but I'm not sure. And there is no display yet. It will, it's more or less, it's a full computer that is inside. So it's kind of a server and it will boot the operating system and it will start presenting the disks. So I actually have the, the box for it. When I bought this device, I did also buy this device used. I actually remember that I paid 5,000 Danish kroners for it, which is um, quite a lot of money. So there is the, probably the original cable. There is a uh, leaflet. Well, we don't have to call this a manual, do we? Quick start with it. A lot has changed since this um, was new. So well, it has a nice picture. You could actually just see this and uh, that would be the display, right? So uh, that looks nice. Probably for the power cable. Still has the still has the patch cable. There is the keys for locking the drive base. And there is a CD, which I don't believe I've ever used for anything. So, okay, that was uh, what's left of the original contents. I do also believe that these um, rather old and bad disks um, are making more noise than necessary. These are all high-end enterprise SAN storage disks that came out of an iSCSI SAN. They are not meant for um, low noise or low power or anything like that. I'm selling these discs with the NAS box just to have some discs in it. And I just wanted six discs that was uh, the same type. So it, they are not the right discs for this. If you want something low noise and stuff, you would probably go with something else. Now it beeps once. I think it's supposed to beep once more. And when it does that, it should be kind of ready. Let's see if the display, no. Still not active. Hope that comes on soon. The NAS box can do RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5 and RAID 6. I don't remember if it can do RAID 50 and 60 and RAID 10. And of course it can do uh, single drives. So you could have a volume on each drive. So that wouldn't be a problem. Just like other NAS systems, this is a system that can do a lot of stuff. There is all kinds of applications that you can run on this. It can be a web server, it can be an SQL server, or MySQL, or web, I did say web, FTP server, NFS server, and iSCSI server. Uh, there is so many options. Also, it can be a camera server, uh, surveillance server, 
you can put on multiple cameras and it can store that data on the hard drives file server it can do uh, Plex server there's a whole range of good stuff that this NAS server can do okay the display is actually on but it's very very dim and I'm trying to record this in the sunlight so um, that might have been a stupid idea but I think we'll just shut it down again because I well, wasn't planning on showing the software anyway okay switching to the back this is um, kind of where this QNAP QNAP System Institute and it's apparently the TS639 Pro um, it has a power plug here which means that the power supply is built into this unit so you don't have to have that loose brick laying around somewhere and this is really awesome as long as it works if uh, the internal power supply dies that's of course not so cool but you don't have to have that brick laying around and that is kind of nice it has two big fans here uh, i think they might be 80 millimeters or something like that uh, really nice but the real strength of this nas server is all these plugs it has two eSATA ports over here which means that you can put on additional drives in this unit six drives internal and two eSATA ports out I don't know how many you could put on one of these eSATA drives but you can uh, expand this quite a lot then it has two one gigabit ethernet ports right here and these can be trunked so you can um, if you have a switch that can do this you can you can actually run two gigabits if you don't have a switch that can do this you can um, uh, run it in another way and uh, it will be able to use the one port for uh, like one user and the other user can run the other port so there are a couple of good ways to be doing trunking uh, I've usually just uh, used one port because one gigabit has been uh, enough for my usage of it as it has mainly been used for backup and um, then it has four USB 2 ports down here which is also really awesome you could um, I have had external hard drives put on that so you can put on four external hard drives no problem and it has a screen out connection so you can actually put a screen on it and a keyboard and a mouse and you will have some control over it I've only done this once and that was actually to try and install something else on it I, I was wondering uh, it was not this unit it was a similar unit exactly the same model and we were experimenting if it would be possible to put um, uh, Synology's operating system on it but that wasn't possible because of well it was possible but it would only be an old one um, there is a 32-bit processor inside of this case and I think um, no I forget how much RAM it has so this unit is from 2008 and it's from November so it's um, it's not new anymore it's closing up on uh, just about eight and a half years old so that's the back of the box and well it has these hot pluggable hot drives which is um, it's a nice little tray so uh, four screws and you can take that out and you can plug it in and you can do this while it's running you can take it drive out pop in another one and the system will see that if you're running RAID 5 or RAID 6 you can pop in a new drive and the system will see it has gotten a new drive and you can go and sell it to uh, repair that RAID 5 drive and it will uh, start using the new drive uh, in that RAID 5 which is really nice when a drive fails if one of these drives should fail you can pop it out take in another one and repair your RAID which is really good okay I just looked this unit up online from when it was new and this is um, stuff they are advertising about it's a 6 bay hot swappable this one is the turbo edition which probably just means that it has a little bit faster CPU and maybe some more RAM I don't know um, and it has all this built-in iSCSI target service uh, encryption uh, RAID 01565 plus hotspur and JOB so it does not have RAID 50 and 60 and 10 apparently and it might they might have added that because also I found that down here it says that this unit can do up to 1.5 gigabytes drives terabytes 
up to 1.5 terabytes of hard drives and that's just because that was the hard drives that was the biggest at the time this came out so also there is a lot of powerful features down here if, if file server ftp server backup server print server remote replication web server mysql upnp media server built in to, to yeah a media server itunes server multimedia server download station which is really awesome for downloading all your <coughs> evaluation software <coughs> so yeah look at the list of things that this nas server can do and it hasn't become shorter since 2008 well i'm not trying to sell you this nas server i am selling it but well i just wanted to give you an overview of what it actually is uh, this is one of the two uh, most popular on the market, I guess. Um, me, myself, I'm probably more to the Synology stuff. That is also why I want to sell this, because um, if you have a QNAP and you have a Synology box, well, every time you log in to one of them, you have to remember where everything is, because they are so similar and then they're not. So you have to... Uh, well, you have to have two brains to have this working. It gets tiresome. So I'm selling this after I've had it for, I think I've had it for five or six years. So it has done really good. I have replaced this QNAP NAS server with a Synology NAS server, and that's only a four bay Synology server. It's not as powerful as this server, but I'm only using mine as for backup. And the Synology server has to, very very awesome shr which is the synology hybrid rate which means that i can exchange one hard drive and get more storage out of it every time i do that with the qnap you have to uh, when you have made a rate 5 on that you have to exchange all the drives to um, increase storage on it and um, well you don't have to do that on the synology if you choose the shr on that so Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.